If you buy and sell vehicles for a profit or you want to, you're in the right place. This is the Flipping Genius Podcast. Our number one goal is to help our listeners make more money. Every episode, we share information, ideas, and experiences of real-life car flippers. I'm Randy Lee. I'm the host of Flipping Genius. I've flipped cars most of my life. For over a dozen years now, I've been a licensed dealer. I am working to build the best podcast about successfully flipping cars for a consistent profit. Let's get to it, flippers. The number one rule of car flipping is the golden rule. Here's a cool update to my conversation about about, uh, buying from the public in last episode, episode 118. Um, At that time of the recording, I told you that that I had made an offer uh, to a, a, a on a one owner 2000 Ford F-150 extended cab. I know a lot of you guys probably aren't real excited about that, but but then again, you know I am because that's that's a perfect vehicle for me. Um, the vehicle only had 152,000 miles on it, and at the time of the recording last week, uh, I was I was waiting to hear back from that prospective seller. Um, he told me he wanted a couple of days to think about the offer I made him. Just a really, a, I don't want to use pristine because uh, it is a pickup truck, but a very clean garage capped vehicle with just some minor repairs needed. As of today, a week later, I own that truck uh, along with the original uh, window sticker that shows it was purchased. I should have brought that with me. I think it was around $28,000. Uh, back in 2000, I didn't know they cost that much back then. Um, and and the uh, the title that shows here in the state of Alabama that he purchased that vehicle uh, with just 11 miles on it uh, 22 years ago. And you would never, I don't think you'd guess looking at this thing. Um, I bought it for the exact price that I proposed. And I actually tried to get an extra $200 off the proposed price after I drove it. Um, but the seller said he wasn't are going to accept any less and i don't blame him and yesterday while i was out for my my six mile walk um i've been doing that every day guys six miles a day um gary from dennis johnson's auto repair called and told me that the repairs we needed to make on the ford uh 100 were going to cost 100 percent of, of of what needed to be done were going to cost me about 400 dollars which happens to be exactly the amount that I had guesstimated when I was making my offer to that private seller uh, where I bought the old girl. They, they, um, and, and they, I was going to say they ought to have my truck. I, I, I've got the truck. I, I, I wrote myself some notes. Uh, I've got the truck. I drove it home. I had to take the Suzuki, my Suzuki in. The old girl's got something going on with her, but 353,000 miles. I mean, she's probably, do a little bit of a checkup. Uh, so I swapped them out and drove that truck home. And man, I'll tell you, and and, and uh, Jerry and, and Dennis and all the guys down there at, at Dennis Johnson, thank you for getting that truck ready so quick. I didn't expect it to get it for a couple of days. Um, and and uh, I should be able to sell that thing for easily $1,500 to $2,000 uh, profit within a week or two. I, I'm driving it right now and I, I my wife likes it. She says, we gotta go on at least one date in this thing. That's it's garage kept beautiful inside, just crazy, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, depending on how many times I play golf in the next couple of weeks, it, it, it'll sell pretty fast. Um, <laughs> truth in advertising, right? Hey, that is always fun. When, when the story goes just like I tell it, uh, not just to you, but, but to the seller and to myself, truly, this this is a win, 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 win. <laughs> the new the new buyer wins. He's going to get a terrific truck. Uh, Dennis Johnson Auto Repair wins with a, a, a another bit of work that they got paid for, and, uh, and while I brag about them for the zillionth time, and and the original seller wins because he gets an acceptable price for his old rig without having to deal with the uh, the general public, which was his motivation for contacting me to begin with. And and I win too, because I make a nice profit uh, from a fairly small investment, and all the while feeling good about the way I treated everyone involved. 
God bless America, right? I, I I love deals like that. And and they're out there, guys. They are out there. Flippers, look for them. Um, you guys probably get tired of me talking about doing a business in a way that you won't have to worry who's on the next aisle at the grocery store. I've said that a bunch of times. Uh, but I think that that is just one of my favorite lessons that my dad taught me. And and since I am one of the people who who does still shop for his own groceries, and since my car lot is less than a uh, less than a mile, probably less than a half away a mile away from my grocery store, it's quite literally possible that I'm going to see my buyers uh, and and my sellers uh, on, on the next aisle at the grocery store. And you know, there's there's a couple other great things that happened that, uh, this week. And I'll tell you more about those when we get back from this break. You heard me talk about Jeremy Fisher and his course, Three Hour Car Flip Academy. Jeremy's course is now available on Flipping Genius for less than $50. Jeremy is a fantastic instructor, car flipper, and podcaster. He's had over 2 million downloads of his material on the internet already and now Jeremy's course is offered to us <laughs> at just 50 bucks. In fact, I can't imagine that you won't make 10 times that amount on your first flip. Go to flippinggenius.com, click on resources page, and then click on more great stuff and you'll see Jeremy's course there along with some sample videos. I encourage you to purchase the course today. Okay, the golden rule, uh, or or you know, doing unto others as, as you'd have them do unto you, or like I said, doing business in a way that you don't need to worry about who's on the next aisle at the grocery store. Um, here's here's a, something that happened this week. Um, a young lady came to look at, at at one of my vehicles, and frankly, I really thought it was exactly what she said she was looking for, but it turned out not to be. Uh, I, and I know this because she didn't buy it. Um, no big deal to me. I, I still have my vehicle, and and I had a chance to to have a nice discussion with a couple of very pleasant people, uh, her and and a friend that she brought along to for guidance. And also, I got a chance to refer some business to my pals at Dennis Johnson, uh, Dennis Johnson Auto Repair. If I haven't mentioned them in the last thirty seconds. Uh, <laughs> It turns out that the lady, and, and I, I don't want to use her name, and, and she was a, a, about a, a third of my age, so it seems like I, I, I should be fine with calling her a young lady. Um, so it seems like uh, the description is pretty accurate for me to use. Um, she had bought another vehicle uh, just recently, a, a 2007 Mitsubishi, um, only a couple of weeks before she came to talk to me. She brought it along because I, I said, yeah, we'll talk about maybe doing a trade in on it. Um, she paid thirty five hundred dollars for it and it promptly uh, stopped running right about 30 miles into her ownership. Um, but the, but it, with it being as is, where is and, and and with her being an intelligent person who didn't automatically assume victimhood, she took it to her mechanic friend. Uh, he told her he could get it right for about $2,500 more. And I mean, when you're buying a $3,500 car, a $2,500 bill is outrageous. I, I, and and maybe, maybe he's right. Maybe it needs $2,500. I didn't, I, I didn't see it just looking at it. And, and that led, uh, that led her to me, of course. And, and I offered her a trade option, but also recommended that she see Dennis Johnson and his guys for a second opinion before she does anything. Um, and, and as of this date, she has made an appointment to, to uh, take the Mitsubishi there. So I'm really hoping they can get her car running right for less than $500. And uh, if, if, if anyone will, it'll be those guys. And while I, I would love to sell her, another vehicle and, and get another vehicle and on trade that I can turn a profit on. Honestly, I would much rather learn that my referral ends up helping the young lady 
and making my friends at Dennis Johnson a couple bucks. Uh, and by the way, they don't pay me any advertising money. I, I mean, it, it's a, a situation that I would feel really good about because um, it looked like a decent car just needed some some tweaking, I'm hoping, and uh, and not $2,500 worth of tweaking. So I, I feel good about that situation. I, I, I know my vehicle is going to sell. I'd love it if if my recommendation helps her. And and I, I'm so pleased that she took it because she's going to go see Dennis. So that was a, a, a great uh, example of, of just following what I believe is right. And it appears to be going the right direction. So that's that golden rule thing I was talking about. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a second. The other thing I wanted to talk about this week is competition. Um, and it, it really is keeping in, in, in tune with the golden rule concept that I've been talking about. I feel very fortunate in that my competitors are some of my best referrers and, and vice versa. Um, this is something I've, I've worked on over the years and it's a, it's an interesting thing because, you know, if you think about it, these guys can make you or break you. Uh, they certainly can get in your way or they can be um, more of a brotherhood. And that's what I'm, I'm trying hard to create here in North Alabama um, with not every car dealer in town. I'm, I, don't, I don't have enough uh, sway that way, but, but with a handful of guys um, that are in my general area, I'm able to say, hey, no, I, I don't have that Toyota, but I think I know somebody who might, or I don't have a truck like that, but I think I know a guy who often does have one. So I think there's probably four or five uh, of these dealers that I work with and a couple wholesalers too that I know may have something and I refer business to them and they occasionally refer business to me. And this is as old as, as time, I guess, but it's not something I think that automatically goes in the car business. And I'm pretty, pretty proud of what we're developing. Um, I don't want to shout out to anyone here because I'm afraid I might forget somebody. Um, but I, I, I think that this is something I encourage you to do. Um, right now on my, my car lot, I have, I believe, I think I've got eight or nine live vehicles. That's that's the kind of business I do. I, I'm not I'm not saying that to brag or to uh, or for you to make fun of because <laughs> I know I know there's there's dealers and flippers in all different areas that you may have one car that you do every quarter or you may have you know ten cars you do a day uh, and anything in between, but that's where i'm at right now so i've got a, a a couple trucks um a few sedans and a couple suvs and they don't meet everybody's needs now i'm mostly just in that that uh, uh i think the most expensive vehicle i got right now is sixty four hundred dollars that i'm selling it for typically all the other vehicles are between two and four thousand dollars so if you come to me and and let's say you want to finance a car uh, i don't do that if you want a uh, normal, if you if you got six thousand dollars to spend, uh, I can't take all of it. <laughs> I, I I don't have vehicles that justify that price usually. Uh, I just happen to have one right now. Um, if you've got fifteen hundred dollars to spend, and that's all you can afford, there's a good chance I I can't help you there either. But over over time, I've learned a, a handful of guys that I feel comfortable referring people to. Let's grab the phone and call and ask, do you have anything? Or I just send them right over there. And, and I ask them, you know, make sure you tell me, tell them that, that I sent you. Now that, in return, um, I, I do get some referrals. But the fact is, I, I feel good about helping the people who came to me find a vehicle 
that fits their needs. Um, I, I, I'll refer a private seller to somebody if, if I know about a vehicle that's for sale and I think it fits their needs. I think taking that long view in business makes a lot of sense no matter what. And of course, ah, I think I'm out of kick a few joy juice again. <laughs> Another thing to consider is is how you treat people like your mechanic, like in my case, Dennis Johnson, um, like your detail people, uh, any other business people that you do business with, they can refer business to you too, and they do. I, I'll, I get a lot of business from people that I've done business with or do business with. And, and I try to do the same thing for them. Um, you know, look out for each other. It, it's a great way to build your business and, and, and make sure that you're referring people to people that you really, truly trust. Um, if I don't trust you, I'm not sending business your way because it'll all come back to haunt me. Um, but I, I, there's a lot of good people out there. And you know, find out what they specialize in. Find out what they can help people in and and set up a, a network either a organized network uh, or a just a, a casual uh, relationship with you and some other business people some of those can be car dealers I get a lot of I get a lot of information from people who actually work in the uh, car auction industry who, who help me um, and I, I don't want to get into a lot of details there because uh, uh, you know in a way I almost think they're giving me favoritism but but uh, you de develop friendships and you develop allegiance and alliances, and it, it helps you build your business. Hey, I have got to wrap this up. I hope that, that a couple of these things that I've, I've shared with you help. Um, it's getting late on, on recording night, and I've actually got to meet somebody to show a vehicle tonight. So this is going to be a long one for me. Um, if you've got something that you'd like us to address on Flipping Genius, please write me at Flipping questions at gmail.com or join the car flipping forum on on uh, Facebook groups just search flipping genius on Facebook groups and you'll find us there go to flipping genius.com f l i p p i n g e n i u s dot com and you'll see links to everything that we do including our our flipping genius YouTube channel uh, all 119 plus episodes of flipping genius are available right there at the website or link to your favorite web uh, uh, podcast host like uh, uh, spotify or apple or, or anchor or, or any of the other places um, again I, I do recommend you check out anchor if you're thinking about doing a podcast i recommend you doing a podcast if it's something that you're interested in and if you do let me know about it I, i'm always listening to, to different podcasts um, if you also if you're on our website make sure you check out our resources page and if you're there's something you'd like more information about or think something we you think that the power of flipping genius might be beneficial and getting a discount on let me know that too if you've got a problem you're struggling with if you've got a success story you'd like to brag about if you've got a, anything that you'd like to share reach out to me flipping questions at gmail.com i would love to have you as a guest on a future episode to share your information, your ideas, your stories. It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. We do them by Zoom. It's easy to do, and, and uh, I'd like to, like to talk to you about it. Hey, <laughs> let's work together, guys. Let's make some money. Let's all become flipping geniuses. <laughs>